Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Yes, I am completely grabby today and that was not the plan. I had planned to come out here in the morning, just work a couple hours, get really dirty and then get presentable for a video. But as you can see, that didn't happen and it didn't happen for a very, very fun reason. Um, uh, for those of you who saw my video yesterday, we announced the Proven Winners pop-up event. Tickets were on sale. They were gonna go on sale early this morning. They did and I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know if anybody was going to want be interested in something like that. Oh, it's it's gone really, really well. It is like 10 o'clock in the morning and we are well over halfway sold out, which is so, so incredibly exciting. I am blown away and I just want to thank all of you, you know, for coming. It's like, it's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited and I'm really excited because if this event is a success, my plan is, is like, to take it on the road, kind of. I mean, I know that there are a lot of places around the country where um, where it's difficult to get proven winners and wouldn't it be fun if we could like do this all over the place. And so a lot of you have emailed me this morning and said, dude, we need this in Virginia and we need this in Florida and we need this in Texas. And I hear you, I hear all you, I'm making a little note and, um, I just, I really hope that this event is successful because I would love to do this. I would love to bring Proven Winners Annuals to the masses. I know that sounds really corny, but it's the truth. It's it's just something from like, like it's something that I would have loved as a gardener, as, you know, especially as someone, a new gardener who was obsessed with Proven Winners and couldn't find it. I just think that this is something that would just be so much fun. So anyways, enough about that. I'm just so excited about it. I'm totally distracted and I thought, well, I could like try and tamp down my excitement and go get dressed and, you know, and film a video or I could just tell you all actually what's going on today. So this is what actually is going on today and it's very exciting. So when I came out early this morning and I wanna say that was like three hours ago, my plan was uh, was to get started on this drip irrigation here. Um, really, I gotta get started on my drip irrigation in my entire property because it's getting hot here and it's getting dry here and so I'm turning on my drip system. This past winter was, and this is crazy to say, this was the first winter that I've actually turned off my drip irrigation system. And that is just because we had such a nice wet winter where we had a lot of rain that um, I didn't have to worry about turning on my drip every once in a while. We don't get freezes here, so we don't have to turn off the irrigation. Um, and honestly, we're so dry here often that sometimes I do have to run the irrigation like maybe once every other week, maybe once a week during the winter. Um, so this winter I didn't have to do it. So now I am actually going to turn on my drip irrigation system, but I'm a little bit worried about it because this is such a big property and um, we're on a well and I'm worried about water pressure and I'm worried about how many emitters I have because the more emitters, the more plants that you water, the less pressure you have to get to the end of the hose line. I hope that that makes sense. Um, but I'm just not familiar with this this uh, this property and this drip irrigation and I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing a lot of hand watering in addition to the drip this year. So that is okay. Let me turn the camera around and show you all what I started working on. Okay, so I'm back here in my beds. By the way, these are not raised beds. I, I get a lot of people asking why I haven't filled my beds up all the way. I totally get it. I know it looks weird. These are actually no-till garden beds. So the goal is, is to get the plants to grow into the ground. And I just ended up putting these beds around them, one, because they were super cheap, and two, it's just supposed to hold the compost in place. Uh, honestly, at this point, I could take them off, but I think that they're pretty, and I'm going to leave them there. So these are not raised beds. These are actually no-till beds. I hope that that makes sense, and that is why they're not filled up to the top. Um, I feel like people like that don't usually watch my channel sometimes click on, and they look at things, and they're just like, what? <laughs> So anyway, so my, um, what is it called? My manifold is over there from my drip irrigation system. And then you can see I have two hose lines coming this way. Now this one right here, it goes all the way around and then it goes to the long border, if you can believe it. And do you know 
how much tubing that is. I mean, the length of that tubing. And the reason why the irrigation contractor did it that way is because he was trying to avoid drilling through the driveway, which I appreciate. But then also I'm kind of like, I'm, it's almost like, man, it might've just been better just to go through the driveway. It's just because this has such, it has to go all the way there. It goes all the way at that end of the property, all the way down that way. And then over to the long border. So one, I'm scared to put a lot of plants on the long border because I'm afraid there's not going to be enough water pressure to get it there. The other tube I have here, this one inch tube, this one is for the backyard and it kind of comes around like this and then it goes over by my office like that. And then coming off of that, I have the half inch tubing and those go to each of the no-till garden beds. And so off of the half inch tubing, I am tapping off of those with the quarter inch spaghetti tubing and then kind of just snaking it around everywhere. And ideally I would snake it more than this. You can see I've just kind of done one big loop here. Over on this side, I've snaked it a little bit more. Hopefully you can see this, you guys. Can you see I've kind of snaked it a little bit more. I Ideally I would have put more emitters in here um, closer to every plant, but again, I have so many garden beds and I just planted all those sunflowers and like they're all going to be coming off this one zone and I'm worried, I'm honestly worried about water pressure. So I'm just trying to limit it as much as I possibly can while still being able to get water to the plants. Um, but I'm just, I, like, I have to be honest, I'm kind of concerned about it. Um, the reason why I'm concerned, we've been having water pressure issues with our pump. Let me show you. So over here to the left of the metal workshop is what's our pump house. And look, our neighbors built their pump house right there. That's new. That wasn't there before. That's fine. I mean, it's, it's totally fine. Um, but I really like my pump house because we ended up painting it black and it completely disappears. Not completely, but it disappears a lot. I'm really happy with it. Um, so past all my junk over here, <laughs> this is the pump house and this is the pump for our well. And I have to say, I've my whole life I've been on city water. I've never been on a well and um, it's definitely a learning experience. I am definitely not well versed in it and Jason and I are trying to figure it all out. I think we're getting there. The problem is, is um, like we live on an acre basically and the pump that was here before, like we, we, when we moved in, we had really bad water pressure, like horrible water pressure. Like the shower was kind of like like not even strong at all. It was just barely going. It was really, really annoying. Um, so we called the pump guys to come out here and they told us that the pump was way, way undersized for the size of our property and the size of our well and all that kind of stuff. So we had to pay to get a new pump in here, which was a lot of money. It was a bummer, but it was worth it. And then now it's working pretty well. Um, but I'm still a little concerned about the water pressure every once in a while. And I don't know if it's just me being extra cautious about it. Um, and, and not knowing very much about it, or if maybe we need even more pressure. I don't know. It's just the, it's just something that's kind of always in the back of my mind. And whenever I talk about irrigation, um, this, I just wanted to show you all this. So, you know, this was, this is always in the back of my mind. And honestly, if I was just like, how do I say this? Like a normal, a normal gardener, um, and just had like some landscaping in some drought tolerant plants. Um, I feel like this pump that we have recently put in would be completely sufficient. The problem is I'm not really a normal gardener <laughs> and I like a lot of plants. I like it to look like my garden has thrown up with color. And with that comes the need for water, the need for water pressure, the need for a lot of emitters. Um, you know, there's just all these, all these needs that, uh, that as a gardener who likes to plant a lot of plants, I have to deal with those things. So it's one of the reasons why I'm really focusing on, uh, like best for the West stuff and plants that are going to be really appropriate for my area, but those plants still need water. Those plants still need the drip irrigation system to them until they get established, um, 
you know, later on. Even natives, even if I was to plant natives right now, they would still need water for the first or second years. So it's just something, it's just kind of like a constant battle and I just wanted to share my concerns with all of you as I'm going through and I'm installing this drip irrigation. As I'm going through, I just want you to know um, the things that I'm thinking about as, as I'm doing this. Okay, enough talking, time to get to work. So you can see I've kind of just snaked it all the way through. I'm trying to figure out the way that I can snake it as little as possible while still getting water to all the plants. And then I think I'm gonna connect this one back to here. So I use the Ratio Smart smart watering system i think is what it's called i use it at my last property and i really really like it you guys if you want to invest it there it's not that expensive it's like 200 dollars, i think but then instead of walking all the way over to the manifold to turn it on and then come back and test it and then walk all the way back and turn it off basically i can just do it with my phone which makes it so incredibly easy so i can put the drip in and then i just do a quick run on the ratio system and so i'm letting it run for five minutes and I'm basically just going to watch. I'm going to watch where the water goes in this bed and if any plants get missed. And I can already see this whole line is getting missed. So I'm going to have to add another, another line right there. Okay, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I'm gonna let this run for a couple of minutes just so I can kind of see the coverage area um, and what's gonna get watered and what's not gonna get watered. So far, I think it's looking pretty good. So the other option is when you have this issue and you have a lot of plants, you can do an overhead spray, like an overhead mist system. The problem with people who live in really hot environments is that when you have an overhead spray or overhead mist system, so much of that water evaporates because it gets so hot. So it's way better to have the drip irrigation so it goes right down into the soil. So I'm just, you know, I might end up using some spray just because what, am, you know, what can I do um, if the water pressure isn't good enough? It's, <laughs> it's like a puzzle. Irrigation is like a puzzle. You can see this one this one look, actually looks pretty good this one has less plants than this one i have to say oh my goodness i just came inside to get my hat can you guys see how many hummingbirds are there oh my gosh oh my gosh how many is that so these must be the ones that migrate we have hummingbirds that are here like all year round. And then I hear that there's ones that will come, they'll like migrate through. These must be the ones that are migrating. Oh my goodness, they're all over. is chewing on everything in my office because I have all these boxes here because we do have something special coming up. Here's a little sneak peek for all of you and a bunch of other really fun things too. So that's that's not till later. Don't worry about that right now. Um, but 
that's what all the boxes are in my office. So um, while I was planting the roses, I decided to finally fertilize all the roses that I have in the backyard. I got those fertilized with the Van Winden's Magic Mix. And then as I was doing that, I was looking back where the chicken coop is gonna go. Oh, by the way, did I tell you that we're getting chickens? Mm -hmm. We're getting chickens. <laughs> so we, the girls and I convinced Jason um, and I realized that I hadn't ordered them yet. So I ran in here and I ordered the chickens and let me show you what I'm getting. So as I was researching uh, chickens and where to buy silkies in particular, I came across this website and it's called Backyard Chickies. They're actually based out of uh, San Diego and this right here, the DNA sexed female silkies is exactly why I wanted to go with them. So basically you can, you can buy... Um, I guess as far as I can understand, you can request a female chick, but they can't guarantee that it's a female chick because I guess it's kind of hard to determine. So what you can do is you can get them what's called DNA sexed, which means that they've like checked the DNA and can show, can prove that they're females. And I definitely wanted to do that because we are going to be putting these chickens in with the bunnies or the bunnies in with the chickens. So I didn't, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any roosters, um, just in case for like territorial stuff or something like that. So the owner slash, she calls herself the mama hen, which is so cute. Her name is Renee. And so I've been emailing back and forth with, with Renee and she seems to definitely know her stuff. So, uh, I'm just so excited, you guys. They're just so cute. So basically, the girls and I, Sadie and Shay and I, we decided to get a white one and a blue one because Fanula said that the blue ones are like have a really good personality. So I'm excited about that. And then, of course, a buff one. Not of course. I want a buff one. Um, so I think that they're just, oh, I just, I'm so excited to get them. I need to do so much homework because I don't know anything about chickens, but I'm sure I can figure it out. And we are going to, we're just getting started on planning the chicken coop and building it and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be really fun. Um, but I just wanted to show you, oh, it's going to be so cute. So excited. No, they're different. Look at that. Do you think there's a whole yeah. patio under here? Uh -huh. hmm. There, there's a patio. What? There's a brick patio under here. What? Yeah. Oh wait, what? There's like heavers. The easiest thing to get that pry bar and just pry them out, or, or just by hand if they're that easy. But do we want to take them out? I guess so, right? They serve no purpose. Okay, I don't want to make more of a mess. You know what I mean? Like, let's just cover yeah. this up. <laughs> so you can still plant something. I'm going to. Yeah. But I'm going to cover the rest up. Yeah. And pretend like I didn't notice it. No, well, we'll have to address it at some point. But I know, but like, like next year, right? I can't do more demo. You know? Yeah. 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 We can't have any more demo. Yeah, this could be a, 20, a 10 by 10 space that's like ripped up or more, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't want to do any more do. demo. Just Not this year.
touch. Doing a very good job. Very good. I came over here, another random thing <laughs> to do today. I wanted to get my purple hyacinth bean planted. My plan was is to grow purple hyacinth bean up every single one of these posts to cover it and just make it like just a mass of plants, kind of like I had on my pergola at my old property. So my first thought was to go out and buy a whole bunch of pots and put a pot on each on each post. And I went to Green Acres and I found these beautiful pots and I love them so much, um, but they were just too expensive <laughs> to buy six of them. So I decided to come home and see how the soil looked once I got underneath all this aggregate base. And honestly, it looks pretty good. The soil looks really, really good. So basically they just have landscape fabric and then aggregate base over it and that's it and then underneath that is just soil so I just kind of cut holes in it this I cut the corner off I put some planting mix just to kind of um, bulk the area up and amend it a little bit for these little baby seedlings and then I planted a seedling at every spot and I think you all saw when we were over here there's like a whole patio <laughs> under here a whole brick patio is under here and it's just covered with a couple inches of dirt and um uh some wood chips and so I made the decision that I'm not even going to do anything about it now I just took a couple out so I could plant that one seedling but we're just not going to touch it now because I don't want to do any more demo on this property. So at least I have these planted. They can start growing up and look really pretty. And hopefully the hummingbirds that are going absolutely crazy will be happy with these. Okay, so I think that's the end as I have the hummingbirds humming right next to me. I think that's the end of my very random video for today. It was random, but it was really a good day. I mean, I was out here at like 7 a.m. and I've been out here absolutely all day having a good time. I got a lot of stuff done, a lot of random stuff done. I got a little bit of irrigation done, some roses planted, roses fertilized, chicks purchased, ready to go, uh, purple hyacinth bean in. And I do have to say we officially sold out of the Proven Winners pop-up event, which is so exciting. It took us like 12 hours to sell out, which is so incredible. That was the thing that I was the most nervous about was, are people going to actually want to come? Are, you know, are people going to buy tickets for this? And you guys bought tickets. And I'm so happy because it's a really good sign that hopefully I can continue doing fun events like this for Proven Winners. So we'll see. I still have a lot of work to do, still some more planning and all that stuff, but the hard part is over. And I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for supporting me. All of your comments have been so sweet today. And then for all of you who are able to come and I appreciate apologize those of you who aren't able to come. Hopefully I'm coming your way soon. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I promise tomorrow won't be so random. I hope you all had a chance to get in your garden today.